horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! I'm Silver! Away! Young Jim Ashley pulled his gaunt team and rickety buckboard to a stop before the one-room sod house he had built here on the edge of Elkhorn Flats. Oh, oh, you critters, oh. Jim Ashley was a tall, raw-boned man in his late 20s. His deeply sunburned face bore a grim expression. There were small wrinkles at the corners of his gray eyes, wrinkles that had once been laugh lines. But Jim hadn't laughed much in the last two years, certainly not since he'd brought his wife and child out to live in this sun-baked desert of Elkhorn Flats. As he stepped down from the buckboard, he could hear Virginia trying to put the baby to sleep. Virgie. Virgie. Virgie, I think that we'd better get... I think he's almost asleep. There. It's been so hot this afternoon, it's no wonder he doesn't want to sleep. Yeah, it is hot. That ain't what's bothering him. Well... Sleep's a pretty poor substitute for food. I'm a fine kind of a critter to call myself a man. Can't even rustle enough grub to feed my wife and baby. Oh, now, Jim, talking that way won't help any. Did you hitch up the team? That's right outside. I'll just wrap up little Jim here. He'll like the ride to town, even if he is asleep. Virgie, I, I got a feeling we'll just be wasting our time asking Anderson for any favors. Maybe not. Gee, there's no harm in trying. Come on. Climb up on the seat, Virgie. I'll hold little Jim. Here. Riding ten miles in an open buckboard won't be much fun, Virgie. The baby and I won't mind. Uh, you think Anderson might stake us to enough grub to keep going for a while? Won't do any harm to ask. Uh, get up there. Come on, get up. Like as not, he won't even talk to me. You don't have to take abuse from anyone, Jim. If Anderson turns us down, we'll get along somehow. Well, I guess it ain't really his fault. Matt King's the cause of it. Trying to starve us out, that's what he's doing. You don't know that for sure, Jim. Yes, I do. That king has got more power in this county than any man deserves. But men don't deliberately try to starve out women and children, Jim. Even men like Matt King. You don't know him, Virgie. That king don't care about anything but himself. To his way of thinking, cattle are more important than human beings. Maybe not. Didn't he tramp down our wheat last fall and drive off our stock? We never knew for sure. Didn't he burn that patch of corn we were saving for meal this winter? I tell you, Virgie, I know what I'm... You just got to be patient, Jim. 
Maybe after a while he'll get tired of bothering us. Patient? Sometimes I think we'd be smart to pack up and clear out. We'd start again somewhere else. Jim, we'll... you promised me you'd never talk that way again. Why, we've made our home here, and we're going to stay. All right, honey. I'm, I'm sorry. But Anderson still hasn't staked us to any group. How do we know until we ask him? Maybe. Get up there. Come on, get up. Looks kind of deserted. It's too hot for many folks to be out. Oh, there's Nat Turner. His team is hitched to the cottonwood. Yeah, might as well drive up alongside of him. Oh, it'll be shady there. I can wait for you. Oh, oh, boys. Oh, hi, Nat. Oh, hello, Jim. How are you, Mrs. Ashley? Well, pretty good, Nat. The baby's not so well. Oh, that's too bad. What's the trouble? Same trouble we've all got. No food. Yeah. I was just into Anderson's store. Asked him to stand me off. He wouldn't do Says he can't. Told him we'd have a crop before the summer's we'll over. We'll only have a crop now that we've got water from Prairie Creek. I'm afraid all of us farmers are going to run into trouble, Jim. Kind of that fencing job we did at Prairie Creek. The creek's on my property. It's nobody's business but mine if you, Tom Noble, and the rest of the farmers want to use the water to irrigate the land. Sure, that's the way we feel, I'm but... I'm going over to Anderson's store. You wait here, Virginia. Uh, Matt King and two of his cow punchers just went into Anderson's, Jim. Thanks, Nat. Matt King's just the hombre I'm looking for. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Hello, Ashley. I'd like to talk to you about doing some trading. Cash? Well, I... You're wasting your time, Ashley. You gave the same answer to Nat Turner, that other dirt farmer. I know, but we've got our irrigation ditches dug now. And inside of three months, we'll yeah. be... Yeah? Mr. King here was just talking about your plans for irrigating. Oh, he was? That's right, Ashley. The boys and me just rode through Prairie Creek. I see you ain't pulled down that wire yet. I'm not going to pull it down. Listen, Sud Buster, I'm giving you one more day to pull down that wire, understand? Prairie Creek is legally mine. The wire stays. We'll see about that. There's a tough winter ahead, King. I've got a wife and a baby to feed. I'll earn enough money to feed them and you can't stop me. A nester like you ain't big enough around the middle to bluff me, so don't try it. I'm not trying to bluff anybody. You've rawhided me and my friends ever since we settled here in Elkhorn Flats. We can take a lot, King, but we can dish it out, too. Listen. If you nesters place any value on your hides, you'll pack up and clear out before I really get mad. You've spoiled the grazing of your plows, and you've wired off Prairie Creek so you can irrigate your land with water that belongs to the cattle. Is that all you have to say? Any more talking I do will be with lead. Then I might as well give you what uh, you deserve right now. Oh, Mr. King, move away, Anderson. I'll bless no, you. Right. No gunplay. Not yet. That's one punch you wish you'd never thrown, Ashley. I'm sure I'll never regret it. Boss, why didn't you let me drill? Anderson, who was that? Followed Ashley out the door. Just a redskin who's been hanging around here for the last couple of days. He don't mean anything. What about the nester, boss? You're not gonna let him get away with it, are you? We'll take care of all of those sod busters. And do it at one clip. Come on, boys. I'm sorry I was so long, Bertie. Any luck, Jim? Well, no, not exactly. Anderson said things are pretty tight right now. And... Matt King? Yep. Was he in the store? We had a few words, that's all. Never mind, Jim. Let's drive on out home. I'm sure everything will turn out all right. No, it won't, Bertie. That's a trouble. There's no harm in hope. Get up there. Come on, get up. Almost home, Jim, and I I think I ought to tell you. Tell me what? Look under the seat. 
Say, what's this? Canned goods. Bacon and cornmeal. Where'd you get it, Virgie? While you were in Anderson's store, I went to Spooner's Market and bought it. But you didn't have it. How'd you pay for it? I made one stop before I got to Spooner's, Jim. I stopped at the pawn shop. Pawn shop? My ring, see, I... I hated to do it, Jim, but the baby's got to have food, and... And so do we. You pawned your wedding ring. Well, we'll redeem it, Jim. You had to pawn your wedding ring because a coyote like Matt King wants more brazen land for his cattle. He says he only talks with lead. When I speak the same language, get up. Come on, get up there. In a trailside camp a few miles from Elkhorn, the Lone Ranger and Dan Reed waited for Tonto to return from town with supplies. Well, this must be Tonto now. Oh, Scout, oh, Tonto, oh, oh. You brought the supplies, Tonto? Uh-huh. Uh, me bring, bring news, too. What kind of news? Matt King. Cattlemen, not like the farmers, who live on Elkhorn Flat. Well, there's nothing unusual in that. The farmers will make out all right. They're getting water from Prairie Creek. Uh, me, no. But Jim Ashley had a fight with Matt King in Anderson's store. A fight? Ashley hit King. And King say, from now on, him no longer talk. Him use lead. That's bad. I was afraid of something like this when I saw that Prairie Creek was fenced off yesterday afternoon. Uh. Well, isn't the creek on land that belongs to Mr. Ashley? Yes, it is, Dan. Well, then how can the cattlemen claim that... It's a fight that will go on for years, Dan, all over this country. The government opening land to homesteaders, cattle raisers see the end of open range and all it means. If it's water they're fighting about, why don't they share it? There's enough for everybody. Yes, of course, but the cattlemen were here first. They resent the homesteaders coming in. Uh, we break camp, ride south? No, Tonto, I think we'll stay here for a few days. I want you and Dan to ride back to Elkhorn this afternoon. Oh. Well, what'll we do there? Get all the information you can on Jim Ashley and the rest of the farmers. And what you do, Kimasabi? I'll wait here till nightfall, then ride over to Matt King's ranch. It was almost 10 o'clock that evening when Matt King walked into the bunkhouse where his two top hands were waiting for him. Red, Pete. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter, Matt? Saw it somebody? I'm sore at every sod busting nest of this trying to squat on this range. Yeah, Red was telling me about what happened in Anderson's store today. You and that lanky critter Jim Ashley. Never mind that. The rest of the boys are herding steers over in the valley. Ride over there and get them. Drive the herd in with you. you better leave the stock in the valley, Matt. No water here on the flats. The critters There's will plenty die. of water at Prairie Creek. It's fence, double strands of barbed wire. And I ain't never seen a cow critter that can walk through that. We're watering a stock at Prairie Creek tomorrow morning. Barbed wire won't stop bullets. But nesters will. Oh, they might gang up on us, Matt, and we can... What's the matter, Red? You look like you just saw a ghost. Well, I saw somebody looking in that window. An hombre wearing a mask. Nah, you must be... What the... It's a rock. Somebody threw a rock. No, it ain't. It's a bullet. Look. Yeah, silver bullet with a note tied to it. See, it says Matt King. Hey, let me see it. Is it for you, Matt? Why? Why, if I catch the dirty, sneaking varmint that wrote this up... What's it say? Matt King, if you talk with lead, I'll talk with silver. It's up to you. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The following morning, Jim Ashley, astride a gaunt and underfed saddle horse, pulled up sharply in front of another sod house similar to his own. It was the home of Nat Turner. Oh, boy, oh, oh, boy, oh. Nat! Oh, Nat! Well, I saw you right up, Jim. Yeah, I thought you might be plowing over by the ridge. Uh, not today. No use doing any more plowing till we know for sure whether we can get water. We've got the water, Nat. We're going to keep it. I uh, heard that you and Matt King I did the had only a... thing I could do. Next move's up to him. That may mean shooting, Jim. If that's what it takes to protect our rights, then they'll be shooting. What do you say? I'm with you, Jim. And so is Tom Noble and the rest of the dry farmers. But Matt King's got a lot of gun hands. It's up to us to match him, some way. What'll we do? I'm riding over to Prairie Creek now. We've got to post a 24-hour guard to watch that fence. You want to ride along? Sure. Sure, Jim. I ain't got a saddle horse, but one of my plow mules can pack a blanket rig. Put it on him and let's get going. In the meantime, Pete and Red, under orders from Matt King, rode toward the sun-baked shack that Jim and Virginia called home. You know, Red, I ain't got much of a hankering for this job. Well, yeah, Matt knows what he's doing. If you break the leader of these nesters, the rest of them will run like scared gophers. And Ashley's the leader, huh? Well, he's the one who does all the talking. The one who hit Matt in the jaw. And why don't we go after him? His wife ain't in on this argument. We're working for Matt King, Pete. We'll do whatever he says. Sure, now, but shut what? up. Here we are. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 boy. Hold steady, on. steady, boy. Steady there. Steady. <coughs> Ashley's horse is gone. Guess he ain't around. <coughs> That's why we're here. I reckon you're Mrs. Jim Ashley. That's right. If you've got anything in this shack that you want to save, you'd better get it out. What do you mean? Because we're burning it down. Pronto. Burning? Now, don't worry. You ain't the only one. Every other nester's getting the same treatment. But you can't burn our house. A rat hasn't got a hole to live in. He'll clear out. Light a torch, Pete. This dry sod will burn like paper. Yeah, sure. But my baby and everything we own is in this house. If you get a brat in there, just fetch it out. Oh, Jim, Jimmy. All right, Pete, fire it up. All right. That's it. Now, come on, let's vamoose. Are we going to stick around to it? No, the water Jim Ashley claims he owns is three miles from here. (laughs) Let him figure out a way to get it over here. (laughs) Get up, boy. Get up, boy. Get up, boy. This is Anderson's store, Tano. We'll go in and talk to him. Uh-huh. What can I do for you, kid? Well, we're strangers in town. I'm looking for Jim Ashley. Do you know him? Ashley? You mean the nester? Well, I thought he was a farmer. Cattlemen call them nesters. Well, do you know him? Sure, I know all of them. Ashley, Turner, Noble, and a dozen others. Well, where can I find Mr. Ashley? He owns a shack about ten miles out on the flats. Ah, thanks. Come on, Tano. Say, huh? that redskin you've got with you, the one who bought supplies here yesterday? Ah. Yeah? That's the trouble with engines. All they do is say, yeah. Can't tell whether they savvy or not. <laughs> That's right. Come on, Tano. Uh-huh. Sure, I know Jim Ashley. Just another sod buster. He hasn't got a thin dime and he never will have. What makes you say that? Well, he's a nester, ain't he? (laughs) They're all alike. Thanks. Thanks for the information. His name's Jim Ashley. I I thought maybe you being a sheriff, you might know him. Sure, I know Jim. Hard-working young fella. Got a wife and baby. It's too bad. What's bad about it? A dry farmer in the cattle country has got two strikes against him before he starts. Well, aren't there other dry farmers around here? Lots of them. The only reason it's tougher for Jim is because he's sort of appointed himself their leader. Well, you're the law here in Elkhorn. Can't you help Mr. Ashley? Sure, son. I'm the law. But I'm also smart enough not to run against the grain of Matt King. 
Then Matt King is the real reason that things are tough for Mr. Ashley and the rest of the farmers, huh? Well, I wouldn't want to be quoted on this. But you ain't far from the truth. Oh, thanks very much, Sheriff. Well, boy, what is it? Well, my friend and I have been looking all over town for a man named Jim Ashley. Do you know him? Well, I've never met him. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to have trouble. Now, you. wait a minute, my boy. Yeah? You're a fine-looking youngster. Just the kind of friend I imagine Jim Ashley would have. Well, I thought you didn't know him. I don't. But I'm in a strange business, my boy. A pawnbroker gets to know a lot of folks he's never seen. Oh. You mean Mr. Ashley pawned something with you? No. The only Ashleys I know are Mrs. Ashley and her baby. Oh, I see. She was in here yesterday afternoon. She didn't talk much, but I knew what was wrong. No crops and no money. No food. Yeah. The sheriff told me about that. Jim Ashley and all the other dry farmers are in the same position. Matt King's the law in this town, isn't he? Yes. I guess he is. But Matt King nor anyone else can keep me from loaning money on a wedding ring. Loaning as much as I want to. No, he can't. And I think I understand what you mean. Goodbye, sir. Come on, Tonto. It was late that evening when Jim Ashley, tired from a long day of patrolling the fence at Prairie Creek, finally rode up within sight of his house. What the... Oh, oh! Shack, it's... It's gone. Virgie and little Jim, maybe they Get up there! Come on, get up there! Jim! Jim! Virgie! Oh, horse! Oh, boy! Oh! oh Jim, I've been praying for hours that you'd come back. What happened, Virgie? The shack is... Burnt. A... There's nothing left. It happened early this afternoon. The... The baby, is it? He's all right. Neither of us were hurt. Oh. Well, how did it happen? Did the stove explode? No, or... Jim, the fire wasn't an accident. What do you mean? Well, those men, the two cowpunchers who worked for Matt King. They set it afire? Yes, Jim. The buckboard's still here? I pulled it away from the back of the house after the fire started. Come on, Virgie. We'll hitch up the team and drive you and little Jim over to Mrs. Turner's. You can spend the night there. Won't you be with us? I'm going to round up every man who has a farm here on the flats oh, and see... Oh, 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 oh. It's Nat Turner. Jim, what happened to your shack? A couple of Matt King's men burned it down this afternoon. Oh, I just rode over to tell you. What? Some of the boys were out in the valley today while you and me were watching the creek. Matt King's crew are rounding up his entire herd of steers. They're driving them down to Prairie Creek tonight. They are, huh? Well, that's good. Well, what's good about it? King's men will snip our barbed wire, water their stock, and all this land will be open range again. No, it won't, Matt. When King drives his cattle to the creek tonight, we'll be waiting for him. Waiting for him with the only kind of talk he understands. Gunfire. <laughs> Pete, you're right on point. Red and Slim will take the heel and drag. Head for Prairie Creek. Don't worry about the wire. It'll be cut by the time we get there. They're coming, Jim. I can hear the cattle. Get your guns ready and stay right here by the creek. You hear that, boys? Yes, yeah, Jim. We got it, Jim. Gosh, you don't suppose King's going to drive his beef right into that barbed wire? No. There'll be some hombres trying to snip it pretty soon. Keep your eyes peeled. Dan. Yes, Tonto? You got matches ready to make torch? Yep, I'm all set. As soon as you give the word. Well, that come plenty quick. Me here, cattle. Tonto, when the Lone Ranger told us what to do, he said you'd know the exact minute to start the prairie fire. Because you could tell when the wind was going to change. Isn't that right? Yeah, but how, Tonto? How can you tell? Indian always tell when wind will change. Him just watch moon. Clouds move cross moon. Mean wind move same way on ground plenty soon. Oh, golly, that's right. Oh, but I never would have thought of it. I don't see now how you... Now, damn quick, light fire. Yeah. Out there. With the wind behind it, it won't be long before that strip is a hundred yards wide. Uh, plenty wide to stop cattle. They change and go other way. Funny we ain't seen Look, them. over to the left, fire. Prairie fire and traveling fast, too. What's going to cut right in front of the cattle? Hey, I wonder... Keep your eyes on that wire, boys. He may think we started that fire and send his gunslingers in here. 
Fire mask. A prairie fire. We can't hold these critters in line now. Nobody can hold them. Let them swing to the left. Matt! Matt! Hey, Pete, where's Matt? He was riding alongside him just a minute ago. I thought I saw a white horse and a masked man riding with him. White horse? Masked man? You must be dreaming. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, there goes a the stock. After a scare like this fire, it'll take two months to round him up again. No sense in riding into that barbed wire now. Matt pulled out. I'm a-leaving, too. So am I. Let's head back for the ranch. Get, get up there, boy. Come on, get up. We whipped them, Jim. Whipped them. Scared the daylights out of them. We didn't whip it. The prairie fire did it. Wonder who started that fire. What do we care who started it? Matt King didn't drive his stock in. The creek still belongs to us. Fire stopped the cattle, but... Why didn't Matt King and his punches ride in anyway? It ain't nothing for us to worry about. Well, say, Jim, your wife's waiting for you over there. Just drove up in the buckboard. Oh, thanks. I'll go right... I'm looking for Jim Ashley. Well, that's me, son. What do you want? Yeah, I've got two messages for you. Yeah, here's the first one. Well, what is it, Jim? Wait a minute. What? It's from Matt King. King? He says he's changed his mind about Prairie Creek. He wants to get together with all of us and talk over a 50-50 agreement on water rights. Well, uh, well, what do you suppose made that hard-shelled old Jasper change his mind? I don't know. I'm glad now that there was no bloodshed on either side. Well, here's the other note. Uh, thanks, kid. But, hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Oh, he's vamoosed. What's in that note, Jim? Yeah. Oh, there's nothing written on it. Oh, but wait, there's something in the envelope. Virgie. Oh, Virgie. What is it, Jim? Hey, look. Isn't this your wedding ring? Why, yes, it is. But how did you get it? In this envelope. Wh who sent it? I don't know, Virgie. But I've got a hunch it's the same person who saved Prairie Quick for us and made Matt King change his mind. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.